So the next thing we want to do is um, uh, save these out and um, it can be quite tricky uh, to save these out. Luckily we've got a compound um, object that will do this for us and it's a mesher so we'll create a mesher object and then we're going to center it to zero zero in the scene and then pick the object to mesh and we'll just pick the particle flow system there and then I'll hide unselected so I've just got this mesher object showing and I'm going to right click and convert to an editable mesh or an editable poly um, there we go uh, so let's save this file and I'm going to save up I'm going to save as uh, particle rocks 01 we'll save up to particle rocks 02 so let's merge this into the master scene 02 so go to file open and master scene 02 was the uh, last one we were working on and this is a scene with the textured uh, terrain and the the villa which is being x ref in so we'd like to merge in the particle flow the collect the mesher the, the measure of the collapsed particle flow and to do that we'll go to file import merge and that file was particle rock so too so I'll open that and we get a dialog box asking us what we want to merge in we don't want any of the particle flow system, we just want the mesher object and merge that in. And that would be an excellent time to give it a, a proper name, Rock01. Okay. Uh, so there we go, that's what those are doing in the scene. So in the modifier list, the first thing we'll do is add a, a tessellate modifier. And that'll just tessellate them once, acting on the uh, on the polygons. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll add a bit of noise on there and we'll give these strengths some value and you can see as I bring the scale down it'll start to add noise globally to all of these at the same time and we want this value to be pretty small they're much smaller than this Somewhere, somewhere mm, too small. Somewhere between one and zero, basically. And what that will do is it will just um, stop any of these rocks looking uh, looking the same as any others. Um, I, th uh, I don't know, 0 0.5. Think it, 0 0.5 looks like it will work. Again, it's a render thing. You'd have to see what's happening. You can, I hope that you can see what those two. Um, those two modifiers are doing there then without the tessellate it doesn't the noise won't work so well uh, okay now the next thing to do um, is add a texture to this in fact there's a if you're not using v-ray there's another step that we need to remember here and that is above the noise we need to add a turbo smooth uh, and that will turn our, our funny shapes into objects that are starting to look a bit more like rocks. Now if you are using V-Ray, and I am, we don't need this turbo smooth step uh, because I'm going to add a V-Ray displacement modifier and I'm going to use subdivision displacement and that will smooth these out for me uh, because they don't have um, m many edges they're gonna they're gonna smooth out. Um, and I don't want uh, I don't want a huge amount on here. I'm going to choose um, 0.2, and I'm going to shift that in by 0.1. And then the texture we'll we'll choose a texture for that now. Bring up my material editor. Uh, I guess actually, firstly we don't need that. Firstly, we'll make the material for the rocks. And like I said, I'm using V-Ray. I'm just going to use a uh, V-Ray material. There's a map saying on it's finding materials. Uh, I'm going to put in my color correct, color correction. Uh, let's 
see if I can uh, get this window run out of space. Hang on. Sorry for the jump. That was just uh, the problem with the making my screen size small. It chopped off the bottom of my material editor there. Um, so we've got the color correct. I was just about to darken it down straight away. Again, I'm going to choose 0.7. That will depend on um, how you're rendering this. Um, and then in the map, I'm going to add a bitmap. And I'm going to choose this map here, Rock 01. So we'll apply that material to the rocks. And I'll just show that map in the viewport. And um, you can see, well, I didn't show you what it was, but there's, there's the texture. Again, it, it's um, nothing stands out, hopefully, but it does tile. Uh, but it is tiling. It is a bit small on these rocks here. So I want to change the size value uh, from 1 meter to 10 meters. There we go. And now I need the corresponding bitmap. Uh, bump map to fit that as well. So in this slot underneath I'm going to grab a bitmap uh, from any maps and I'm going to choose Rocco 1 bump. Let's just have a quick look. So it's the corresponding bump map to that texture. Uh, and we'll drag that over to this text map slot in the V-Ray displacement and I'll choose an instance. Um, right, let's do a quick test and see what that's doing. Ah, well, there we go. You can see the um, V-Ray subdivision has uh, turned these from cubes and boxes into, um, uh, they actually look like cute fluffy little rocks um, so I think there's a they look quite furry so I think there's a mistake with the size of the um, this Rocco one bump map I don't think I remember to uh, yeah here we go look I haven't changed it to 10 it ought to it ought to match the um, the diffuse texture on the rocks so let's change that from 1 to 10 and uh, give that another render and see if see if that makes um, look a bit more rocky instead of fluffy. Well there we go, uh, those, uh, that's more of what I was aiming for, uh, rocks instead of fluffy rocks. Um, super. Now um, uh, I'm not sure if the, there are maybe perhaps a few too many up here or perhaps they're sticking out a bit much. Um, but I think actually when, when we've got some plants and trees around here, those are gonna look those are gonna look super. I think they're standing out because there's there's not much else there at the moment. But um the last thing I'm going to look at is um putting a uh um an ocean in here, the the, the sea. Let's just come out a bit. And before I do that, I'm going to go to File, Save. 